I know some of my intros can be a little long-winded, but this one is short, sweet, and to the point. With what's coming back to Ohio State in 2024, plus what you added in via the transfer portal, the Buckeyes should be a preseason top five team. They should be the favorites to beat Michigan, the favorites to win the Big Ten, and an easy contender to hoist up a national title. And if none of that happens next season, Ryan Day's got more concerns than simply a hot scene, a bunch of pissed off Buckeyes fans cursing his name on message boards because the surplus of talent that is coming back is good enough to win a national title and then some. So let's talk about it. But if you are new here, welcome on into the channel. My name is Cole Thompson. Some of you knew that, some of you didn't. Who cares? But I'm a radio show host based in Houston, and I talk college football daily. So if this is the type of content you enjoy and you need it to survive the offseason of college football, then make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. We have a ton of content coming out simply because 2023 has hit zero does not mean we are stopping making videos every single day. So go ahead and tell your friends, your family, your mortal enemies, your best of pros, the drunk dude passed out in a Waffle House parking lot, college football aficionados and Ohio State fans everywhere about this channel because we are on the race to become the number one YouTube show talking college football daily. Continue to follow me on social media at Mr. Cole Thompson. That way, conversations surrounding our favorite sport never have to stop flowing. If one of these players came back for next season, you would be on cloud nine. You'd be elated. You'd be running to the nearest gas station, betting the Powerball, and making sure that you had the winning numbers. That's how excited you would be, simply because of it's a veteran feel with a player that has been to the promised land, been a part of a college football playoff run, been a part of an 11-2 and two season, and understands that there is more than just money at the next level on Sundays. There's something about the Saturday feel. Just one of these players, JT Tuamolowau, Denzel Burke, Jack Sawyer, Emeka Abuka, Travion Henderson, Lathan Ransom, Jordan Hancock, Donovan Williams, Ty Hamilton, Ty Leak Williams, all of it, one of them, Coming back, you would be the happiest of all people. They're all coming back. They're all coming to Columbus. They're all sticking around despite knowing that they were draftable. They had a shot of making it into an NFL roster, making an impact on an NFL team on Sundays, and millions of dollars in the process. You know what they all said? I am so damn tired of losing to the maize and blue. I am so damn tired about hearing how Ohio State has lost its edge. I am so sick of being a part of a program that doesn't garner the same national respect that we have earned, damn it, and we're going to take it back, and we're going to run rampant. That should be the persona. If you are an Ohio State fan right now, strap on your helmet and run into a brick wall because of this is the foundation. Let me tell you why I believe that Ohio State is supposed to be a top-five team going into next season. This is a lot reminiscent of the Michigan team that just saw the confetti fall in Houston and hoisted up their first national title since 1997. Veteranship that wanted another shot. There were a ton of players that could have gone pro last year. Blake Corum was one. What else did he have to prove in Ann Arbor to know that his legacy was secure? You could have seen a bunch of wide receivers go. Tons of defensive linemen, multiple offensive linemen, all say, I've had my fun. I've enjoyed that I've been able to win two Big Ten titles and go to the college football playoff. My next chapter is written on Sundays, not on Saturdays. But they said, we're so close. We're right there. We know if we get back here next season, this is our year. Third time strikes the charm. Easily. We're built for this. And that's the way that Ohio State's roster is. A, number, a top five defense that is returning countless veteran starters at multiple positions. An offense that should be more improved be simply because of what you're bringing in. Yes, you're losing Marvin Harrison Jr., but it's wide receiver you. Regroup, retool, replenish, wash, rinse, repeat. That is the MO in a place like Columbus, just like it is in Athens, Georgia, and in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and soon Austin, Texas, and a few other programs that exist in our favorite sport. That is the MO of a place like Ohio State. But now, it's simply not wash, rinse, repeat. It's return, regroup, reload, win it all. And they can. An easy offensive adjustment could be made in certain positions to where you realize that you're humming at the right time. Defensively, you're going to be about as fundamentally sound as a human cardboard box. Everyone knows how sturdy you will be simply because of the veteran talent. I mean, Jack Sawyer and Tua Malolo coming off of the edge 
is phenomenal. Edge of Houston, another five-star talent, is just sitting there on the sidelines like, when do I get to play? Next year, buddy, it's their time to shine. It's their time to go out on top. It's their time to be the superstars, just like Nick Bosa, just like Joey Bosa, just like Chase Young. They're on a long list of Buckeyes who have become bountiful before making it to the NFL. Those two strapping it up. Denzel Burke on the outside, shut down Corner City. You have Lantham race them over the top. Guess what? Number one safety back in action for another year. Offensively, Travion Henderson. He's already knows how to split carries. He's more than happy to do it again with the calming talent that's already about ready to embark in Columbus. Emeka Abuka, wide receiver you, new wide receiver one. And the same thing goes for a bunch of other positions as well. Stability on the offensive line, and you might have upgraded at quarterback simply because of the mobility of Will Howard. This is why the expectation should be next season, win it all. Win it all. Not win the Big Ten, not defeat Michigan, not go to the college football playoff and win a few games and get to the semifinal. Make it down to Atlanta and hoist up the title. That should be the game plan for Ohio State because this roster is good. This roster is so fine. And then you add in Quinshawn Junkins. I understand. A lot of people talk about running backs don't matter. Running backs don't matter. They're a dime a dozen position. Yeah, well, they don't matter. But when you have two of the elites of elites, you definitely are benefiting from it. And now here's the best part. He's already split carries with Ulysses Bentley and Zach Evans during his time in Oxford. So splitting reps shouldn't be a problem, but it saves their bodies for the next level. Travion Henderson has enough tread on the tires to where you could say when he gets to the NFL, he was going to be a star. You can say the same thing about Quid Sean Junkins after two years of 1,000-yard campaigns in Oxford. Now, both of them have a shot to be 1,000-yard runners. Both of them have a shot to average over 5.5 yards per play. Both of them have a shot to find the end zone double-digit times like they did this past season. And both of them have a shot to split carries and take pressure off of Will Howard. Speaking of Will Howard, simply put, what's been the one thing missing from this offense every year you play Michigan? And what's been standing on the other sidelines? Mobility. C.J. Stroud is a damn good quarterback, and he's going to win Offensive Rookie of the Year. Took your team to a college football playoff berth and was a two-time Heisman finalist. The man is not as mobile as we want to agree with. You didn't have that last season at all with Kyle McCord. You know who did have that? Michigan. They had a quarterback that wouldn't run the football often, but he could evade pressure, work outside the pocket, and give his wide receivers a second chance. And you know what? The wide receivers are better in Columbus than they are in Ann Arbor. The tight end play is a little bit better maybe in Ann Arbor, but not by much. Offensive line, I would lean Ohio State most years. Not last year, but most years I would. Run game, no more Blake Corum, no more issue for Michigan. You are the favorites in most categories when you're talking about Ohio State. And Michigan absolutely is going to be a contender. Whether or not Jim Harbaugh decides to head back to the NFL, they will be a contender simply because of culture and locker room presence. This was a team that didn't have its coach for six games, yet they took over the show. And Sharon Moore was simply a glorified babysitter who did a phenomenal job and absolutely should be the heir apparent if Harbaugh goes to the NFL. But Ohio State is built like Michigan this year. Ohio State is built like a team that can run rampant against anybody. They could send out the best of the bunch, and Ohio State should sit there and cackle. Not to mention what you're bringing in in young talent. I mean, you look right now at a guy like Jeremiah Smith. He flourishes in fall camp. He's going to have a role with this offense. Carnell Tate, guess what? Marvin Harrison 2.0. Maybe he's the number one wide receiver, and you always have a Buka as your glorified number two. And that's a good thing to have. That's a very good thing to have. You also have other young studs that are coming into this building and a lot of talent at offensive line, defensive line, but veteranship to set the tone. If you are as good as a program as you believe you are, then what will happen is these veterans will take over for day. They'll take over for a coach such as Jim Knowles. They'll take over for Brian Hartline. They'll take over for everybody inside that locker room. And they'll just say, hey, coaches, worry about game planning. We have the aura. We know what the expectations are. We're running this stuff. That should be the way that good teams are. Because you know what teams did that this past year? Michigan. You know what teams did that this past year? Alabama, Texas, Washington. You know, the four teams that went to the playoffs. You could say the same thing about Florida State. They went undefeated. You could say the same thing about Ole Miss. They went 11-2. and two. You could say the same thing about Oregon. They went 12-2. and two. All those teams had an enigma to where they took over by November. 
And everyone else was simply just like holding out their breath because they had nothing else to do. That's what championship caliber rosters have. And with this amount of talent returning, with this amount of veteranship, with what they know what the expectation is every year when they step foot in Ohio Stadium, when that occurs, that should be what is implemented just by simply them coming back. You shouldn't even have to say, guys, it's time for you to take over. They should already know that that's the MO. And I guarantee you that they do. I guarantee you that every single player that said, I can go pro or I can come back for another season to strut my stuff and show the world we are Ohio State. We are the Ohio State. Yeah, they probably carry that type of mantra with them as well. So Ohio State, next season, they're going to be a team to, fe- to mess with. They're going to be a team that you don't want to see on Saturdays. And they should be a roster that even if there are some trepidations at times or limitations to Howard's game or concerns with young emerging wide receivers, any of that, they still should be a team that is better than almost every roster they face off against. Every single team, they should be the favorites. Every single game, they should be the ones that are terrorizing opponents. And they should be the ones, at the end of the day, finding their way to a national championship. That's how good this roster is. And when you have a roster as talented as Ohio State, it is very hard to say to yourself as a fan, anything less than this is a failed season. For Ohio State fans, losing to Michigan automatically is a failed season. You can go to the college football playoff. You can go to a New Year's Six Bowl. You can go 11-1 and one or 12-1 and one on the year. It doesn't really matter. The fact that you lost to Michigan, they have room to talk. Yeah, that does not fly in Columbus, Ohio. That does not fly at a place like Ohio State. And it shouldn't happen next season, especially with this amount of talent. Hey, guys, thank you so much for watching that video. Don't hit the X button yet. Make sure you hit subscribe to keep up with all of our daily content found on Just Saying It and anything else that we post on this channel. Bye.